you've ever taken care of a patient with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, it sticks with you. The disease, which is often referred to as juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, is rarely fatal, but it can rob children of the ability to play, to be active, and to grow, the real essence of childhood. And to date, we don't know what causes it. It's pretty clearly autoimmune, but there's no serologic test for the condition. Now an article appearing in Pediatrics by Daniel Horton and, full disclosure, several of my former Penn colleagues, links prior antibiotic exposure to GIA. They used the THIN dataset, which is a United Kingdom primary care dataset. They identified 140,000 children, of whom 152 had JIA. They matched these to 10 controls each based on age and gender. The bottom line? 88% of the kids with JIA had been exposed to antibiotics compared to just 75% of the control children. That's a lot of antibiotics, but of course the question is, was it the infection that warranted the antibiotics that led to JIA, or was it the antibiotics themselves? The authors do a great job untangling this and put the blame at the feet of antibiotics. In multivariable analysis, the infection falls away as a risk factor. There was a dose-response relationship, such that more courses of antibiotics was associated with a higher risk of JIA. There was also a temporal relationship. A dose of antibiotics more proximal to the index date was more strongly associated with JIA. Finally, they addressed the issue of reverse causation by, in sensitivity analyses, redefining JIA according to the first appearance of any symptom that might be associated with the disease, like joint pain or limp. In the end, though, it's fairly convincing that this association is real, although their explanation that antibiotics might alter the intestinal microflora and thus affect immunity has yet to be borne out in any studies. I want to take this opportunity, though, to address an issue that always comes up when a new risk factor is identified in a study like this, and that's the absence of giving us attributable risk data. In other words, what is the amount of variation in JIA diagnoses that we can pin on antibiotic use? This is really crucial information when we want to counsel our patients, and we don't get that from this paper. In the end, this research will certainly open the door to future studies, and given their hypothesis that intestinal microflora are key in all of this, those studies will likely involve a lot of stool collections on children's, which, my friends, is one of the reasons that I stick with nephrology research. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.